Welcome to Anything Cricket. Let's talk. But we've got a pretty good show for you tonight. In fact, uh, we'll be looking at the T20 matches over the weekend. West Indies going into the weekend with a 2-1 lead. Lots of action and drama off the field as well. But, uh, well, uh, let's not focus on that too much right now. We'll also be hearing from Dayton Smith a bit later. He'll be talking about the performance of the women in the opening match of the uh, one-day series against South Africa a century to uh, Diana Dotting and some other um, good performances. Uh, we also be hearing from Wayne Holder, who in fact will be the main person looking forward to those uh, T20 games over the weekend. I also ran into a British journalist with a bit of a difference. His name is Dan. You'll be hearing a bit from him as well. So lots for you to enjoy on this episode of Anything Cricket Let's Talk. I'm Philip Hackett and I'll be back in a moment. Don't let annoying pests bug you. Lick them for six. Omega Pest Control is the perfect solution. We are experts in termite and pest eradication, specialized mosquito treatments, foundation, residential, commercial, and industrial treatments. Call us day or night or visit us at our office located at Fieldside Drive, Long Gap St. Michael. Omega Pest Control. Call 425-5954 2316526 or email us at opcl at caribsurf.com. I suppose the cry around Barbados is can't wait, can't wait. And not only around Barbados, but all cricket loving people, maybe around the world, but especially supporters of England and the West Indies. The um, fourth a T20 coming up on Saturday and the fifth on Sunday. What a weekend ahead! given what we have seen so far in the three matches, Wayne Holder? Well, you are correct, uh, Philip. Uh, the series has reached somewhat of a pivotal stage uh, with the West Indies leading 2-1 going into the fourth match. A number of possibilities. Uh, the, the series could be wrapped up tomorrow as far as winning the series is concerned if West Indies were to, to pull off another victory. Uh, England, on the other hand, looking to even the numbers by winning tomorrow. And then we'll have the real uh, clangor of a uh, decider come the fifth and final match on Sunday. But yes, the series itself has been very, very intriguing, very exciting, I, I must say. And um, as one who thought that the, the, the comparison between the two teams, when you look at their rankings, would have really meant that England should have dominated it has turned out to be rather, um, well, rather close, I should say, with the West Indies actually uh, being the better team so far. And the setting up, setting up with that amazing performance uh, in the third one international, a man called Rodman Powell. Well, um, Powell uh, coming into the team, somewhat surprisingly, one would have to say, um, uh, coming into the side, and then also uh, the fact that he... The fact that <laughs> the fact that he came into bat at number four in the in, in the order uh, after uh, one would have expected that he would have been one of the all-rounders more or less uh, coming after captain uh, uh, Kyron Pollard at number six, but a decision taken to put him in that number four position uh, um, apparently to separate the, 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 the two left-handers, Nicholas Poran, who was at the wicket when he came, and Darren Bravo, who would have been the next batsman in. And it were wonders, one would have to say, uh, like you mentioned, a devastating uh, boundary-studded 100 uh, by Powell, a, a grand return to the West Indies team and a return to form. And uh, Poran himself, you know, um, coming at number three, coming good at, at that number three position, and uh, the, the two of them really set the West Indies on the way to what turned out to be an impregnable position. 
Well, we've noticed the struggle um, for Puran at number three. He has now um, got a good score, which I would imagine would boost his confidence. So maybe the jury's still out on his best position in the side. Well, he's been, he's a very experienced player. I mean, even at, at his young age, uh, particularly in the T20 version uh, of the, the, the game. So uh, one would expect that uh, he, he, he should be able to make that necessary adjustment. Uh, personally, I didn't think that that was his best position uh, and uh, that, that he could do um, optimum for, for, for the side in, in a number three position, but the management um, uh, seem to be looking in a completely different direction. And on that occasion, it came good. Let me see how it goes forward in the future. I like the idea of Powell um, at four, not necessarily from the point of view. I said Powell, but I should say a Powell type player. The reason behind it, well, uh, neither here nor there with me. <laughs> I, yes, I understand the, 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 the whole idea of, of, of a left hand and a right hander um, and the, the, the difficulty that it's supposed to, to give to the bowlers. But I, um, I, I am more convinced that class is class. So therefore, if I see a Gordon Greenwich and, and a Viv Richards batting together, um, I, I, you know, I, I think their class and ability alone, it doesn't matter who left, right, or in between. So I tend to go with, with, with the, look at the quality of the player more so. But why I said I like the idea of Powell up there, a player of that nature, um, I, I think, and, and a number of international players have commented on it, the whole idea of waiting to the back end, uh, it is really outdated. And if you look at the teams that do well, they're dangerous throughout. And uh, I, I accuse uh, Pollard, and I, I continue to do so, of, of hiding, sh shifting from responsibility. He is the most experienced of the players. I believe he should bat more balls rather than waiting to come in and try to win it by scoring 25 off eight. And I, I, you know, I think that's playing from behind. So I'm glad that Powell got the opportunity um, to bat you know, uh, number four, and he made it count. Well, previous to that previous game, well, previous to that game, um, there would not have been a lot to recommend uh, Rothman Powell uh, on his record uh, mm. up, to, up to this stage uh, for a number four uh, position. Uh, he would have started out in the T20 uh, format more so as a hard-hitting, batting all-rounder uh, who used to bowl. I noticed his bowling has fallen off somewhat. I guess it's because he's been spending a lot more time on the concentrating Mm -hmm. uh, on his batting skills. So, yes, that, that may have been the result of it. What we saw uh, on Wednesday may have been the result of that intense work that he has been doing with his batting, something that he, he, he intonated when he talked about uh, specifically preparing himself uh, to, to, to come up against the wrist spinners, which used to give him a lot of trouble. So, yes, it, it worked on, on Wednesday, but as I said, previous to Wednesday, I don't think there would have been a whole lot uh, to, to recommend uh, Robert Powell to bat in the top order of a West Indies side. And I'm not suggesting that um, he should bat there all the time. Um, you know, it does show though what can happen when you give uh, someone a chance, when you give them the opportunity. But I'm more concerned not about whether Robman Powell bats there or not, but about having a batsman of that nature bat in there. Um, and, and not just keeping all the big hitters uh, for later on, and to my mind, that doesn't really make any sense. If you look at how T20 cricket is played nowadays, that's not how the, the successful teams do it. And um, therefore, I'm glad to see that someone of that nature was put there. On this occasion, it was Robin Paul. On this occasion, um, it worked. But I still believe that if um, the captain um, Pollard wants to, to earn a respect, not from uh, being... Uh, a, a big bad person on the field or whatever, but from, from performance that he needs to take responsibility sometimes and, and, and bat up there, not just um, wait to try to lash a few balls and, and, and bowl four overs to justify a play. Um, but, so you've got um, Powell doing well. You've got Puran who had a good game. Um, you've also got this controversy in here over the last few days. Um, how does that affect the players, if at all, going into the weekend games? Well, I have heard all the rumblings and um, uh, the, the viral nature uh, of this, this, this discussion. But I'm going to go on the, the premise that Cricket West Indies has co have come out and made a statement. And as far as they're concerned, there's no crisis. There's nothing to, 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 to be bothered about. And it is something just, um, just uh, something blown out of proportion. 
And I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and suggest that because they are willing to take that position, Coach Simmons has come out and taken a position that it is not true. There is no such thing as any victimization or bullyism in the West Indies team. So given um, their, uh, their pronouncements, I'd like to believe that the players themselves uh, would also be of, of, of the impression that uh, of that, that way of thinking and that there really is not a crisis among them. The crisis may be with us uh, out here, the, the, the spectators who are waiting to find out what is the real truth. Well, um, given what has been revealed to me, I would be more inclined to believe that the world is flat um, than to <laughs> believe that all is well. But um, I can only hope that whatever is in here, whatever is amiss, that the players can do themselves justice and do justice to the fans and supporters. Um, not only the West Indies supporters, the English have come down, they have come down to support their side, yes. But um, from what I've seen at Kensington, they've also supported good, exciting cricket, whoever's playing. Well, if, if, if there is a crisis, we, we won't be able to wish it away. Neither mm -hmm. you, I, nor Cricket West Indies or anyone. It is not something that you can just wish away. And the, 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 you know, well, I, I think you need to tell that to Cricket West Indies. <laughs> the truth, truth, truth has a way of, uh -huh. of um, rising uh, uh -huh. to, to, to the surface. Yes. And sooner or later... Even if it takes a while, uh, yes. Sooner or later. That's a sooner or later, we will all know. Yes. But at the moment, the attention is on this weekend, uh, looking to be an exciting climax uh, to, to, to this series. And um, the West Indies in a very good space, one would like to think. The West Indies are in a very good space, and I was want to believe that they'll be looking to wrap up this series tomorrow uh, with victory in the, the fourth match, take that series uh, winning lead, and then possibly uh, uh, give a couple of the, other, the, the reserves an outing in the final game with the series wrapped up. Mm -hmm. England and on the... Yeah, go yeah. ahead, sir. What? No, I was saying that if they don't wrap it up, because I, I believe that the players, the full squad should be exposed um, regardless, because yes, you want to win. There two ways about that. I, anytime you step on a, on a field in a competition and you're not playing to win, then you're doing an injustice to those who you're playing against and those who you're watching. I don't care what other objectives you have. So you're looking to win. But I think you've got to get to the point, and it goes back to your whole concept of the squad mentality. You've got to have confidence in every last person in that squad. So I would like to, I, I think you would have missed an opportunity if the five matches are played, are completed, and uh, the guys don't get a run. Because the most important thing really is that World Cup um, championship, that T20 World Cup late in the year. So you need to expose guys. This is the time to expose them. I, I am, I've been disappointed um, with a number of things so far. I don't know that if we come under pressure, let's say from, um, you know, a Warner playing against Australia or, you know, Ben Stokes running the mock or whatever, that Paul is going to bring himself on to try to deal with that. I think that the more inexperienced bowlers in the side, Odin Smith, Romario Shepard, uh, those are the guys who need to be bowling the overs. And I don't really understand what nonsense this is with a captain who has bowled, um, so I've been told, um, his, his maximum number of overs five times in his career at the international level and twice during this series. I'm disappointed with that. So I, I would hope that over the last two matches that the full squad and especially the inexperienced members of the squad get a chance to play some cricket. Well, you already know my position uh, on, 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 on that, uh, Philip. And I, I, I wouldn't go back over, I won't go over it, you know, but, um, but just to say that at this moment, the tendency among the current West Indies management, the, the coaching staff and the think tank uh, seems to be uh, to concentrate heavily on putting out what they would consider the best 11 mm -hmm. and uh, at the moment looking to win this series. So I'm going to go on the premise that that is the, th the thinking going mm -hmm. into tomorrow's game. Hence, uh, I, I made the point. And the only difference with my thinking is that I, I would like the best 15. Um, well, I yes, think the best 15 is what would help us to win. So, you know, I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying what I would like to see. Right, but I wouldn't expect, um, given what has happened before, I wouldn't expect mm. uh, them to veer away too very far uh, mm. from, from the established policy. I wouldn't expect it either because it's that established policy that has us at the bottom rank of, of, the, of the various uh, standings. So I'm not arguing with you on that at all. You're quite right. <laughs> Um, they, they, you know, they've set a pattern. I don't expect them to vary away from it. And therefore, I don't expect necessarily a lot of improvement down the road until we do vary away from some of those outdated policies. Well, right. I was, I was going to go on to the England 
uh, right you are going to do that sorry in england's position you know where uh, they made their changes you know they, they included a number of the other members of the squad in, in that third game um totally outplayed by by west indies i don't know if that the fact that they, they changed the team had anything to do with it it was mm -hmm. just that West Indies uh, came came good on that day, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. but, but the captain then, had to had to um, the captain was unavailable because he was carrying a bit of a niggle. But apart from that, yes, they made some changes. But yes, he is out of the series. I suspect mm -hmm. Sam Billings may be uh, under something uh, okay. of a uh, cloud. Also, mm -hmm. um, they would have wanted to look at a couple of the other bowlers um, after the disappointing performances by the more experienced um, Christopher Jordan and Saki Mahmood. Uh, who, who didn't do very well uh, bowling in the death, even in the game that they won. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, uh, yes. Oh, yes. They won by just the one run. Yes. But they, they would have been disappointed by their death bowling. And hence, we saw both Mahmoud and, and Jordan out of the side uh, for the third game. Is uh, the, 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 Their replacements didn't do much better or any better whatsoever. So there may be a case of returning to the, the, the experience established uh, players in the, the likes of Jordan and uh, Mahmoud. And uh, I think that they will be looking, something looking for performance from the standing captain, Moin Ali, who, who has been disappointing with the bat uh, mm -hmm. so far, who hasn't really come to the fore. Uh, or with the bat, uh, we've got Jason Roy, uh, whom a lot was expected of. He's shown glimpses. Maybe he scored all his runs he's... in the warm ups. <laughs> well, he's shown glimpses of what he's capable of, and we know uh -huh. what he's capable of. And um, they will be hoping that he will come good um, on, on this weekend. And then he will be supported they will be supported by the, the, the young Turks, you know, um, Tom Banton and uh, Phil Salt, you know, mm -hmm. the debutant from the third match, uh, who, who got a, both got, they both got half centuries. And uh, they will be looking to see them go uh, from strength to strength. So England will be looking to come with all guns blazing, definitely hoping to get back in the series, first of all, and then go on to contest it on the, the, the final day. Well, if we move slightly away from the T20 and we go uh, further, not only in terms of overs, but in terms of distance, the squad to uh, play three one internationals in India was also announced recently. What are your thoughts on it? Kimar Roach is back. That's, that's one um, very obvious um, difference, so to speak. Well, Philip, I am in entirely enthused by the, 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 the selections, let me say the selections of both, both Kimar Roach and Nkrumah Bonner. Uh, and not necessarily because of the individuals involved. Mind you, uh, they both are worthy of selection and deserve their, their, their place. But, you know, uh, more so with the message that their selection sends, you know, the, the, the message that all players will be considered and not this policy that was being uh, followed uh, in the particularly in the previous uh, selection regime, where it, it seemed to me like if the the the, the, the selectors were playing the role of an employment agency, looking for jobs, looking for work for as many people as possible, or maybe you know a, a government looking for, for to, to to provide jobs for citizens, uh, because this categorization of players and this pigeonholing of players and these three different teams that we were looking for was never really uh, going to work, was never really on the cards as far as, as I, I, I was concerned. So um, this, this policy now that, you know, that other players, all players, in fact, I mean, the, the lead selector did go on as far as to say that he's looking to create a pool, a, a wider pool of players. He wants to see competition uh, among the players uh, for, for, for places. So it could have been Seals and Blackwood, for all, for all you know. The fact of the matter is that the message it sends and the direction in, in, in which the selectors uh, seems to be going um, should uh, encourage all players, you know, to try to make themselves eligible for all the formats, you know, and that the, 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 the best performers uh, and the best persons fit for, for, for the positions will be will be selected you know um interestingly we've seen this the first movement is uh players from the red ball side moving into the white ball you know um, because roach and bonner in particular under the previous regime uh, uh would have been uh, hemmed in as 
red ball players, test players only, you know, no, 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 and, and not included in any of the white ball sides. So we see that first movement of players from the red ball into the white ball, and it makes for a very interesting future going forward to see who will be those players coming the other direction from the white ball setup uh, into the red ball. Because mind you, me, we've got some weaknesses. We've got, well, we've got a lot of weaknesses in the test team, and we, they, they are positions up for grab a number of positions and very few really fully established players uh, in, in a number of those positions. Uh, so there, be, there will be competition, you know. There's some interesting, some matches. I mean, I'm looking at, let's say, uh, our Brandon King, you know, where the West Indies, a dire need uh, of opening batsmen. You know, I, 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 even with the captain uh, as an opener, his performances are not very reassuring. So we are looking for opening batsmen, not necessarily one opening batsman. But with a Brandon King, uh, when you say the captain's performance is not very reassuring, are you referring to Pollard? I'm talking to the test captain. Oh, okay, 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 <laughs> okay. Yes, I, I probably lost track of you there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about the mm -hmm. test captain. So, uh, yes, so I mean, there, there, there are the batting positions in the test team are all up for grabs. No one in the test team can claim uh, to, to have established themselves, except maybe for the same bonner. You know, he has been a consistent performer. His, his sample is probably not as big as some of the others, but he has done a, a better than, than, than most. Of, but, more, but most of the players in, in, in the battle lineup in the test team are, are, are up for grabs. And like I was mentioning, you know, this movement from white to red, this guy, Brandon King, who has been previously categorized as a white ball player, you know, um, he is one that I would be keeping a keen eye on with the fact that we are looking for, for batsmen, looking for opening uh, batsmen. So uh, the fact that he has been named in this, this ODI side is another step in the right direction as far as I am concerned. And I'm also very, very keen to see how this guy, Aki Hossein, develops. I think he has the potential also to push on a bit further and, 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 and see what he has to offer at the longer versions of the game. So exciting times ahead, uh, judging from what, from what the, the, this new selection panel have started with. Yeah, so just let me um, read that team quickly. Kyron Pollard, the captain, Fabian Allen, Nkrumah Bonner, Darren Bravo, Shamar Brooks, Jason Holder, Sheho, Akil Hussein, Azari Joseph, Brandon King, Nicholas Boran, Kimar Roach, Romario Shepard, Odin Smith, and Hayden Walsh Jr. No off spinner. But, um, I, you know, I guess you can't have everything in a, in a squad. You've got the two left arm spinners and the um, head and watch leg spinner, no off spinner. <laughs> uh, if you're going to India, you would have thought you would have covered all your spin bases. But, um, you know, I wish these guys all the best. Well, you, you want to say something else quickly? Off, no, yes, you talk about the off spinner because I was going to mention notable absentees, uh, Roston Chase and Shimron Hetmeyer. Uh, we, 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 well, we yeah, we, well, notable, but I mean, we don't probably need to, to, to say too much on that. Um, Hetmar, um, you know, I don't even, the issues with Hetmar go beyond how many runs he is able to score and how many runs he doesn't. There are obviously issues going on there. The fitness thing being thrown in, as, as a, that's a whole shamble in itself as far as I'm concerned, um, which I really don't know how one could unravel it. Uh, as for Rostin Chase, he has not cemented his place by, by virtue of his own performance. So uh, my comment about the absence of an off spinner didn't necessarily mean that a Rostin Chase was shortchanged by not being there. But uh, it was more meant to, to suggest that it's unfortunate that there is no such person uh, maybe available. He would have made it um, easily. But, you know, with our method of doing things, this method that you talk about that is not going to change, just one of the things, Ross and Chase came into cricket or came to be known as a batsman. And anytime he falls short of scoring a bundle of runs, he's not going to be considered no matter how many wickets he gets. So um, I accept that this is our mentality and so be it. So you, you're going to not have an off spinner because there's nobody else um, that they wanted to use. And if there was an off spinner that they were going to take, I'm pretty sure that he would not be as good a batsman as Ross and, uh, as Ross and Chase on his, on his worst day. <laughs> um, in other words, they would be looking to take maybe a, what you call a special off spinner who, who's really not a batsman. So sometimes the thinking to my mind is a little bit um, outdated, but who am, I, to, who am I to make those judgments? Uh, well, given, given the, the choices, I don't think they could have done a lot better than what they have done here. I mean, mm. another, another player of note, uh, and it would have to be something other than cricket, uh, Evan Lewis. Who's absolute, who's continued as absence uh, has to be of some concern 
mm. you know, to, to, to West Indies fans. I mean, the, the West Indies cricket is not very much known. It's not one of their strong suits in communicating uh, with, with the other stakeholders. Uh, the goings on behind the, 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 the background. And sometimes we have to wait for snippets uh, to, 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 to leak out from, from Cricket West Indies. But it is of some concern that Evan Lewis, who has been by far um, one of the more assured um, batsmen in the, the, the white ball team, definitely at the top of the order. Uh, and his continued absence will be uh, of some concern to, to, to myself. And I would like to believe to fans generally. But uh, outside of that, um, I don't think that the selectors could have done a lot much, uh, much better uh, in naming this squad uh, for, for, for this India trip. Well, we've also had the selection of the Barbados team for the opening for the engagement as regional cricket returns to Kensington. Well, yes, Philip, and I mean, um, surprise, surprise. When I, when I looked at that, that uh, site earlier, uh, when, 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 when I first saw it, the first thing that came home to me actually was the absence of an Ashley nurse. You know, that, that, that was the one that really stood out you know, glaringly at me. And we see young Shem Holder uh, being included as the off spinner. You talk about off spinners, you know, the, the, uh, down that line. Uh, one off spinner replacing the next, the very experienced Ashley nurse, too. You must say who has been around and has did, done human service uh, for, for, for Barbados. Don't, don't, don't let us get away from that, that fact. But I, I guess it, it may very well be. Again, I guess the, the, the authorities may have to tell us a bit more. I don't know if it is a fact of uh, Ashley's availability. We don't know if it is a matter of fitness. But all we do know is that a team has been selected without Ashley Nurse and, and Shem Holder has been included along with Jamel Warwick and as the two spinners uh, in the side. Um, the, the, the all, also, a welcome return uh, when you look at it to Shamar Springer, uh, who has been out of the limelight, out of the picture uh, for, for about a year or so, a little more than a year now. And uh, we, we see that he has made his way back into the setup. Another interesting name, uh, more than interesting. Um, a special mention has to be made of the return of Shane Dowrich uh, to, 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 to regional cricket, to the first class level and back to cricket proper. I mean, Shane Dowrich uh, yeah. has, not been known, has not been known to play any cricket uh, since uh, the, the, his departure from New Zealand uh, for, for, for personal reasons at the time. So Shane Dowrich is back another very, very interesting name. And... Um, the, the, the rest, well, we, 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 the usual suspects, you know, Jonathan Carter, uh, Shamara Holder, Keon Harding, Raymond Reefer, uh, Shane Mosley, you know, they, they, they would have been in, uh, just Justin Graves, who has also been there or thereabouts, and Jonathan Drapes, another interesting player. One would hope to see this young man break through. He has been around uh, and, and knocking around and just being there or thereabouts for quite a while, and I would like to hope that a season like this could see could see him breaking that ceiling uh, and, and throwing himself into regional prominence. Okay, well, um, Wayne, I think you've been very thorough in outlining the various um, issues and, and sharing your opinion on what uh, has happened over the last couple of days in the T20, what we can expect on the weekend, and those squads uh, the West Indies squad to India and the Barbados squad for the opening of the first class season. So, Wayne Holder, thanks a lot. Okay, Dan, welcome to Barbados. Thank you for having me. How has it been so far? Absolutely incredible, mate. Couldn't be happier to be here. It's fantastic. So what do you like about Barbados? Uh, the weather? We, yeah, we've, we've kind of gone up from about four degrees in the UK to, uh, to about 30 in, in Barbados over, over the course of an eight-hour flight. So that's been brilliant. The people have been amazing. The hospitality has been fantastic. Everybody's been so friendly. Bit of a culture shock. Everybody goes around saying hello to each other. We, we, we don't do that in the UK, which is, which is going to be a bit strange to go back to. But honestly, a stunning place, beautiful people and beautiful countryside. You're here for the cricket, but what aspect of the cricket are you really dealing with? 
My colleague and I, we, we run a YouTube channel called We Cricket, and uh, we're here basically covering it. We, we make a podcast at the end of the day's play, whether that's a T20 game, which is obviously these ones, test matches, wherever they might be. And, uh, and we're making a whole kind of travel vlog of the whole thing. So we, we had a net yesterday with a couple of guys that play for Barbados. Uh, we played golf, we've been down the beach, um, just the whole kind of holiday Barbados cricket experience. It's been, it's been brilliant. But I hope you're already booked for the test matches. I've still got the passes, still dangling around my neck, so hopefully they might let me back in again. So you're working to get material for your YouTube channel. What sort of stuff are you actually doing? What do we do? Anything, anything and everything cricket related. Uh, we've done videos with pro players. Uh, we've, we've, we've done videos with, uh, we've given them kind of the cheapest cricket kit we could find, and, and we've kind of seen how good these pro cricketers are with, with a bat that's worth about 20 pounds. Um, We've, we've, we've ball tampered, which is highly illegal, so don't do that, kids. Uh, we have challenges. We, we kind of play a lot of backyard cricket as well, which is obviously a lot of what kids kind of grow up doing. It's, it's all about having fun. The whole, the whole aim of the channel is to showcase that cricket can be really fun, and that's what we're there for. So what has been the response to this social media enterprise? Um, we know some people are very conservative and slow to embrace modern developments. If it's not the print media or the traditional radio or TV, they're slow to accept it. Amazing. Couldn't be better. Um, we, we bring a fan's perspective to, to cricket, and, and that's what I think people really enjoy. They, they hear an honest opinion. There's, no, there's, n there's nothing hidden. We're not being told that we can't say things about players and stuff. We're not horrible to them, obviously. Um, but, but you get a fan's perspective. Everybody sits at home, everybody watches the game of cricket. We give them exactly that. We, we give them a fan's perspective of what the cricket is. And I think we're moving more that way, which is exciting. The crowd being back certainly adds to the atmosphere, doesn't it? Amazing. So good, so good. We were, speaking of so good, uh, we were sat upstairs in, in, the, in the soundproof kind of media room. Sweet Caroline comes on, the England fans, you can hear them through the windows. Um, it brings such vibrance and such kind of electricity to a cricket ground to have fans back in it. And it was, yeah, it's so cool to see people back. When we think of fans and gathering, we think of COVID. It has been around now for a little over two years and in the conversation every day. How was that impacted your attempts to do your work? Uh, so I think we get, we're getting better, aren't we? We're, we're learning how to live with it, which is it's a shame it's still here. Um, but we've had to take PCR tests to travel from the UK to Barbados, which is completely fine. We, we don't want to bring any, any viruses over with us. Uh, we take lateral flow tests to get into the ground as well, uh, just to make sure that we're still negative all the way through the week. Um, and it's just, just a little bit of restrictions. It's, you, you learn to live with it. As you said, we've had it for two years now. Um, we, yeah, we, we accept it's here. And uh, if someone has to put a cotton bud up your nose so you can come in and watch cricket, then, then so be it. Describe your Barbados experience, if possible, in one word, but no more than three. Oh, that's put me on the spot, isn't it? Okay, you I, 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 think, I think vibrance. Vibrance is the word I think I would use. It, it's been fantastic. As I said earlier, the people are, are so friendly, um, so happy generally. People want to say hello to you. People want to talk. People... People want to help, which, which is amazing. You've got the noise, the, the DJ on the, on the far side bringing the atmosphere in as well with, with the England fans and obviously the West Indies fans that are here as well. Um, so I think vibrance is a vibrant, vibrance is a really good word to, to kind of sum up this whole experience. Uh, what an innings as well by Rodman Powell. Can England come back in the remaining matches? I think they can. I think um, I was a little bit more confident. Uh, coming, coming out because I was expecting to see a West Indies side similar to what we saw in Abu Dhabi and Dubai for the World T20. Um, but there's new faces, hungry, hungry cricketers wanting to make a name for themselves for West Indies cricket. And that's been really nice to see, but also a little bit of a shock. And I think this team, are, are a better, be they're a better unit than what we saw uh, four, five, six months ago, however long ago the World T20. Some skeptics think that this England side is a, pretty much a second or a third string side. And a win for the West Indies, therefore, wouldn't really mean much. What's your view? Uh, I think they are. They are a second or third string side. But obviously, the rest and rotation policy that the ECB have employed, um, they need to have that. The guys have just been, been walloped in Australia, 4-0 in that. And I mean, how it wasn't 5-0, I don't know. Um, but we need to look after Josh Butler. We need to look after Bairstow. Joffre Archer is injured. Uh, Mark Wood would be another one. Sam Curran coming back from injuries. We need to look after these guys. I mean, we, we can't just kind of constantly otherwise i don't think they'd ever have a day off 
But we saw how good the, a lot of these players did against Pakistan last summer in the UK when, when there was a COVID outbreak in, in the camp. And there's some really quality players out there. Maybe names that people haven't heard of before, but, but some ones that I think people will be looking out for in the future. Thanks, Dan. Hope to see you back for the test match. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks very much to Dan and uh, wishing, here's wishing him and his colleague all the best with their YouTube channel, We Cricket. From Dan, we go to Dayton Smith. But always glad to see my old school mate, Dayton Smith, and especially when he's in this sort of mood. Um, Dayton, you would have been a lot happier if the scorecard had read West Indies won by such and such, but I suppose you'll take a century from um, DeAndre Dotting, a half century from Haley Matthews, and a pretty a decent bowling performance. Uh, good night to you, uh, Philip, and to all your viewers. You are so right. I'm, ex I'm a very happy man today. The West Indies ladies made me very happy with their performance. And I think it's a real shame that they didn't get the opportunity to try to turn it into a victory. Uh, in, in, in the end, after their beautiful efforts, I, I think a no result is, is a major disappointment. But, uh, but having said that, uh, having endured some tough times that are batting in recent years, it was a joy to watch today. It really was. And the rain, of course, had the final say in the victory. <laughs> yes. Um, but, but let's go back before the rain, um, because I mm -hmm. think that was, that was, there was sunshine all around, not only at the ground, but um, mm -hmm. it should have been in the Caribbean too, in terms of, of our appreciation of what they did. Today, um, DeAndre Dotting, uh, to, to a, a smaller extent, because she wasn't there long enough um, until she got injured, Captain Stephanie Taylor uh, and Haley Matthews, put on a display of batting that I have not seen in West Indies cricket in my time. Um, in, in all of West Indies cricket, youth cricket, men's cricket, women's cricket, one of the difficulties we've had for a long time is how we approach our batting in the middle of this. Today was, was textbook. It was an example for any young player to watch if you want to learn how to play this game, how to bat in those middle overs. Uh, in DeAndre Dotton's case, it was also a good example of holding back in the, in, in the power play. She was, she was fantastic all the way through. But in terms of her partnership with Haley Matthews, beautiful to watch. Um, beautiful stroke play, um, picking the gaps, understanding that you can play some good balls without having to try to hit every ball to the ground, turn the strike over, finding those gaps. There was a point at which the um, commentators who were both South African mm -hmm. said, about half a dozen times that this is too easy. <laughs> and in my mind, I was saying, the batsmen are making it look easy. And that was the real joy. It was fantastic. Okay. So, um, Deandra Dottin, you know, when I see Deandra and Haley bat and, and Stephen and Taylor, um, mm -hmm. those three for sure, from time to time, others may, may, may do it. But those three, virtually whenever they bat, regardless if they make anything from zero to 100, they look, a cut above the rest, several cuts above the rest. And I ask myself sometimes, how do they get out? <laughs> you know, and um, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's really difficult to understand sometimes yeah. how they get out when they look so assured and yeah. so, so on top of things. Well, let, let me take them one by one. Um, Stephanie Taylor has been world class for a very long time. There is a reason why she has 5,000 runs under her belt. She's always assured. She's always calm in the mind. She's always clear in what she wants to do. She's always confident that when she needs to take, take the pace up, she can. She, she's great at turning the strike over, finding the gaps, knowing where everybody is. Everything you look for in, in a battle. DeAndre Dotting for a long time, the world kept talking about her potential, about her, her power. Uh, and she had never really put it together in, in, in a way that allowed her to score consistently. Mm -hmm. But if you go back over the last year, she has been scoring consistently. She's made 200s. She's made a, a number of 50s. And every time she comes to the crease, she looks in control. She looks in command. And she looks much more clear in her mind mm -hmm. than I've ever seen her. Right. Um, Haley Matthews, I think your last statement applies to her more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Haley Matthews has a phenomenal talent. She has always looked easy at the wicket, never looks troubled. And then, as you say, sometimes she just gets out. But let me pause to, 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 to shout out kudos 
to the West Indies coaching team. We, we criticize them when, when things go badly. Since this coaching team has been in place, these players are batting far better than they did before. Uh, I am prepared to, to jump right in and say the, the, the coaches must be doing something right. Now, the players are doing a lot right. Mm -hmm. But I think I think this the, the, it is, the coaches must have done something, either in the way they've told these players to approach innings, or in some of the technical work they're doing behind the scene. But they all look very clear in their minds. Okay. Having given them kudos, there are a couple of things that I would ask them to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. You have three players who are clearly now world class. You have to get the right people around them. Now, last time I, I watched Shadi Nation back. It was clear to me that she has improved. Oh, yes. Uh, I was yep. very impressed last time I saw her. Yeah, she's improved. Um, where I think they need to do a little bit of work, um, Shadow Williams, who I have a lot of hope for in the future, who's, who started her career very well. Um, she, she has struggled nowadays to get the ball away. And I think she, had, she has to be careful not to fall into the, the problem that most West Indies players seem to fall into. We get this idea that batting is about blocking and bashing. And 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 I think when you look back at today's bashing at the back end, well, sometimes they do it. <laughs> unfortunately, they, do, they try to do it at the front. It doesn't work. Oh. Um, but if you look at today's play, uh, Rashad Williams and uh, Kaisia Knight, between the two of them, faced twenty nine balls mm. and scored two runs. Yeah. And I think someone has to to work with them to say, look, you've got to score. Not you don't have to hit boundaries. You don't have to clear the ropes. You just have to find ways to score. And scoring is a single. Scoring is a two. You understand? And um, so instead of um, blocking the balls that are on your stumps and leaving someone to the off stump and then looking for one that you can hit away, they, they've got to do a little bit of work. And, and the truth is, Kaisia Knight has the technical uh, know-how to do it. Uh, I, I think she has one deficiency that she needs to work on. Mm -hmm. she, she, does, she, she sets herself up on a boat leg stump. Uh, she forms this base and then when the ball is close to her, she drives it beautifully. When it's a little wider, her feet don't go to the ball, her hands go to it. And it, it, it presents a problem a lot of times with edging the ball, but, it, but it all, if you're going to reach for the ball a lot of times, you can't be reaching for power. You have to just be, be, be confident in reaching for the ball and getting it in the middle and knowing where the gaps are. Well, maybe she's got to learn to leave it then. Maybe she's got to learn to leave somebody. Well, yes, but, but I'm talking about situations where she has to score. When mm -hmm. the ball is okay. away from her, she should leave it. But when she has to score, I think you have to, she has to be more clear in her mind and right. where the field is and stop driving the ball to players and, and, and learning how to maneuver the ball behind the wicket sometimes. But I'm just saying that, that the coaches are doing a great job with the others and I have no doubt that they must have the ability to correct these two things because the shallow I think has a, a, a good future ahead of it. Well, well they may uh, already, for all we know, they may very well be working on it. You see, sometimes it, yeah. everyone doesn't adapt quickly. And sometimes yeah. I, I've had that Possibly experience so. already, you know, yeah. uh, even, even with, with top players and, and more so in, in my other sport, um, you know, trying to get a yeah. player to do a particular thing. And I yeah. remember some years ago, I, I, I was actually working on this weeks before tournament and, and during the tournament, and it was only in this semifinal when the player was about to be eliminated and we had a timeout that he again listened to what he was saying it clicked yes. and he was uh -huh. able to you know so so sometimes it takes a while um before i agree, uh, agree. You know, yeah. I, I, and, and let me say I'm, I'm not for one moment suggesting they're not doing the job i'm just saying that when i what i'm seeing i feel no that's not the finished product yet uh and, and I'll, I'll tell you why it was even clearer to me today when you watched um Haley matthews batting today with um with the other mm. daughter has a range of strokes all around the ground she has the power to clear the boundary she wants. But during that innings, she never tried to compete with DeAndre in terms of, of clearing the boundary. She did her job. She stayed at the wicket. She maneuvered the ball. When she got the opportunity to reach the boundary, she did. Um, but there was never a case where she was bogged down. She kept the, the score moving all the time. And I, I say that in contrast to what happened before, because earlier in the innings, if we were getting a few singles taken over uh, and getting DeAndre back on strike, uh, then there will be two problems for the other side. One, you have the score taking over, so they, they, they have to think in terms of how do we stop it. But secondly, it means that you keep getting the Andrew back on strike, which is the more dangerous player, which mm. they, they have to worry about. So okay. I'm just saying that, that in, in terms of analyzing the whole innings, if we mm. had that happening all the way through, right. instead of 234 for three, mm. and it's a beautiful sounding thing to say 234 for three for all women's team, which had been sort of 
scoring around 160 in total for a long time. And we did discuss um, that before, yes. Yeah. Exactly. You did discuss it here. I remember I talked about raising the targets, and it is clear that they're, they're, they're hitting higher targets, and that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, the point I was making is that a little more turnover of the strike and a little bit more ability to maneuver the ball. And in 234 for three, might have been 250 for three with, with the last five moves to go. Fair enough. So, a, a great word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seeing some really good things, and I'm happy with it. With it. They, kudos to Courtney Walsh and his team. A quick yes. word on the bowling, um, limited as it was. Yeah. Um, limited in terms of the opportunity, I mean. Well, I think the first thing that strikes me is this. Uh-huh. Um, Haley Matthews is one of the two players who made a recent uh, world team. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was good today in this context when uh, South Africa actually had to go for health level because it was a very high uh, target, a you know, right. small number of overs. Uh, to see that she's proved her worth today, not only with the bat, but she came back, picked up two wickets. Uh, Ramarat picked up two wickets. And that's what you want. When a team is chasing after uh, a target and they're, and they're forced to go hell for leather, even though you might, you might go at a little higher rate than you normally go, you want to make sure that you, that you induce errors. And, I, and I'm glad today we were able to do that. And, and, to hold on. and, and it was good to see uh, Shamila Collin, who, as I said to you, uh, I, I don't think she's progressing the way I, I, I would like because mm-hmm. I think she's a very talented player. Yeah. But today it was good for her to keep things very tight at the beginning, pick up a wicket, not give her anything away. So I think all together, I see a team that's getting better. Okay. Um, what, what about the South Africans? Um, your thoughts on them generally? Yeah. Well, when the South Africans came down to the Caribbean in that series, they were clearly the better team. Mm-hmm. Today, they were put under pressure by our body. And I saw some cracks. Uh, they, they are captain the leg spinner, who was really good today. Uh, in the midst of all that carnage, she bowled, I think, 10 for 29. Uh, okay. But the seamers who started really well, and, and again, kudos to the Andrew daughter. She was not panicked early on. She was prepared to, to, to start at a slow rate. We, 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 we were going at about two, three runs in over at one point, and she was not panicked. And the, and, the, and the bowlers were bowling a lot of dot balls. But later, once she, she had got herself in a hit at the, her stride and started to put the pressure back on them, mm. the only one of those seamers who then later on was able to, to, to bowl at a, at a pretty good rate was Ismail, who's a top class bowler. But all the others started to lose their line. They started to lose their lengths. The two spinners started to lose their lengths and their lengths because they were under pressure. So mm. it shows. They're, they're human and we can we can put them under pressure and make and make them falter yep. uh, well, I, I think I think overall um, it was a good contest brewing and I'm sorry that you didn't get yourself yeah well the men have been um, doing some pretty pleasing things as well and uh, going into the weekend matches leading to one um, looking to to at least win well we want to win both I'm sure but at least to win one to be assured of, of a series win which would be a moral boosting, I'm sure, if nothing else, um, as they you know look forward to the World T20 late in the year. Unfortunately, there have been some distractions over the last day or so, and uh, one wonders how this may very well affect the players going into the weekend. Well, let me start first by saying that I think it, to go with my great mood today, it was magnificent to sit and watch Rob Robin Powell construct a brilliant innings on, on Wednesday. Great to see. So sad that every time we started to take steps forward, we seem to, to, to stab strong. ourselves, stab ourselves in the back, <laughs> you know, trip ourselves up. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some things about this that, that, that concern you, uh, Philip, and I will tell you what it is. When we were into the World Cup, there was a lot of concern about team selection. And subsequent events have proven that it was legitimate concern. In the response to that, there was an interview in which the captain was very aggressive towards uh, a reporter. Mm -hmm. And in this saga here, um, the the West Indies coach, who I I consider to be a friend, uh, was in an interview and you could see his uh, ire coming out in the way he answered. And then basically very aggressively said, I'm not answering any more questions on this subject. I'm a little concerned uh, that the West Indies management uh, seem to be taking this approach when they they ask questions that are difficult or that they don't like. That they, they seem to be this approach that almost says you can't ask me those questions, and I think that's not a good environment that they're creating. There, I think 
if there are things happening in and around the team, uh, it is legitimate for journalists to ask some questions. And I think it would have, in the same way the West Indies issued a statement to say, they, they, we don't see any issue here. That it would have been quite okay to say that in an interview without necessarily um, being aggressive about it. Now, having said all that, I will say that there are some things to the casual on the that look very strange. In, in my estimation, and I don't know if you selected the West Indies team, say it differently, Odin Smith uh, must be picked primarily as a bowling all-around uh, And having bowled one over for four runs in the, in the game, it was a little surprising that he, that he never got a little more, although you might say he did so well, he didn't need to bowl anymore, so that's fine. But then having bowled one over for four runs in the next game, you pick him as, and he doesn't bowl at all, so that raises the question, mate, are you picking him as a batsman? So. These kinds of things do raise questions in people's mind as to whether something strange is going on. Now, secondly, the repo. The West Indies Credit Board issued a statement saying there's no issue here. But WIPA then issues a statement and says, we want to meet, and very maybe we want to discuss this issue and some other player issues. Now, that sounds to me as though WIPA saying that they have issues they want to discuss. So it's not a good look to the public, for the West Indies Great Board to say there's nothing here if Reaper says there's something that they want to discuss. Uh, I think it is appropriate, in those, and, and this is about communication, because I don't have the facts, I can't say somebody's right or somebody's wrong, but I'm talking about communication. I think in these circumstances, it is, it is appropriate and right for the West Indies Great Board to say, look, we are going to meet with Reaper, and uh, after that meeting, we'll, we'll issue the appropriate statement. You don't have to to start getting aggressive towards the press and you just don't have to start saying there's no issue here when you've had no time to investigate it because the, the allegations were made one day and the same day the statement comes out saying there's no such thing going on here. I don't know that you could have investigated that matters thoroughly in that time. So I, I'm just a little concerned about the way CWI is relating to the public and communicating with the public and, and the kind of relationship that's building between them and journalists. Uh, I, I would suggest that everybody needs to sort of step back and say, how do we want to engage with each other that is as positive for West Indies cricket? And at the moment, that engagement doesn't look good to the public. Oh, yeah. that, that's my comment on the issue. And there's a reason for that, Dayton. I've been saying now for, I don't know, it could be as long as two decades, that the, one of the big issues in West Indies cricket is that we do not, as West Indians, we do not seem to understand how to manage professional sport. And I'm not only talking about the players. In yes. fact, if we start with the fans, if we start with the fans, the fans and, 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 and people around the cricket, the first thing they will say about a player, a Hetmeyer or, 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 or Rutherford, he's a professional, he should know this, he should know that. What utter rubbish. Um, you don't become a professional because somebody paid you to do something. Being paid is only one aspect of it. In fact, you could be a professional and never receive a cent. Because it, professionalism is, is also about how you go about doing something. Well, usually yes. when you go about doing certain things in, in the right way, you put yourself in a position to be paid. But it's not yes, just a matter correct. of you get paid and therefore you're a professional. So I've been saying for a long time, we do not understand professional sport. And it's not surprising that the players themselves don't understand and the fans don't understand it because the people who are in control of it, many of them don't seem to understand it either. Because yeah. if you look at what, happened, what has happened over the last three days, it would, it's probably comical to anybody who doesn't really have a, 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 an investment, any emotional investment in West Indies cricket because it's just one ridiculous mistake after the other yeah. when you look at it in terms of professional sport. And there's a reason why in many jurisdictions and many other sports, you do not become part of management in professional sport without certain qualifications. I'm not saying that you need a piece of paper to prove everything, but at least that piece of paper shows that you would have been exposed to a, 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 some sort of training that hopefully would have given you some insight. But we choose people to do these things because of who they are in society, because of who they know, and in terms of professionalism, you know, we've been suffering for a long, long time. What I will say is, this, that is that having struggled for a long time uh, to put together a good team of cricket, I think it would be a real shame after that brilliant game played on Wednesday if this is not allowed 
to affect the players on the weekend because I think I, I, every West Indian would like to see us play on Saturday and Sunday the way we've played the, the other games in this series because we have been putting up good performances and I really hope that that it doesn't affect them in that way. Because, and, and that's one of the things I think that is important why the CWI must think about how they engage with the public and the CWI because it has an effect on their players. Uh, so I think that, that uh, it would be important in the future for them to, to think about that mm -hmm. uh, so that our players can walk on that field tomorrow, clear their minds and get mm -hmm. back to doing the job that they did I'm, so well on Wednesday. I'm not going to do like my like our good friend, Arian Holder. Someone said to me the other day, when are you going to get Wayne to get off the fence? Well, I'm not going to be, I'm, never, I'm definitely not going to go on defense with this one. Wayne would call it diplomacy. Diplomacy. Well, I, I, I'm not going to be diplomatic then because I'm going to stick my, well, it's always going to stick your neck out. But I am going to go uh, with the belief that these players who many of them seem very passionate, very serious about their cricket, very serious about improving. And I'm going to go with them that they can put all this behind them. As I said, as I said to Wayne, um, I would rather believe that the world is flat. And I think, you know, that was a theory some way back, I think, yes, in the days yes. of Columbus. I, I, I would more believe that the world is flat than I, than I believe. And this is just my belief, you know, that, and, and that belief didn't come, didn't come from a dream. It came from the things that I've been exposed to and advised about over the past couple of days and my own observations over a long time. So I, I would more believe that the world is flat than I would believe that everything is okay um, and, and there's yeah. no issue with the players. But I, I, I back these players to put that behind them and give us six to seven hours of cricket this weekend representing themselves. But that does not mean- I'm with you on that. It doesn't mean I that really, I believe they're gonna go and blow England away. England, uh, people no. are talking about second and third string side, but again, it's about professionalism. These are professional. You remember last year when in England uh, have a COVID, a COVID issue and they had yes. to replace their entire team and bring back Ben Stokes prematurely from, from resting. Yes. Yes. And, 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 and put together a team in a couple of days and went out there and did what they had to do. It's about yes. professionalism. Agreed. And this is, what, this is why I told Wayne earlier that it's not just a question of, of, of winning or picking the strongest team this weekend to win. To me, you've got a squad of roughly about 15 players. And for, for my money, with a World Cup later this year, you should be able to use any sensible combination of those 15 and believe that you can represent yourself well. Because at the end of the day, the prize is really not for beating this England side, which you want to do. You, you don't have a goal to play. Yeah, you want to do that. But at the end of the day, if any effort to do that, you leave fellas who are not going to get a chance to, to get some cricket in before uh, the World Cup, or you restrict the chances they get, that could come back to haunt you. So I will back these guys to give up their best, win or lose. I back them to give up their best. And, and that's, what I, them. And that's what I asked of them. Give me a good performance. Give me your best. And I'm, I'm a fan. I'm with you all, all, all the time. Mm. All right. Thanks, Dayton. Always good to hear you. And especially when you're in a good mood because the girls are, well, I was going to say the girls are treating you nicely, but people may misunderstand that. Yeah, um, so the we, girls are doing well. Let's the, girls are doing, the, the girls are doing yeah. well. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. Philip. Have a good night. All right. Thanks very much to Omega Pest Control, DA Computer Services, Dayton Smith, Wayne Holden, of course, our British journalist friend, Dan. That's our show. Thanks for watching. Join us again soon for another episode of Anything Cricket. Let's talk.